Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to my channel and uh, long time no see again. I know it's been a little while, but I'm not really going to talk about that in this video because this video is about my brand new pet rooms. A couple months ago, I moved, and when I moved, I brought all of my animals with me, and they are all now set up in my new house, in my two new pet rooms, and I'm really excited that I'm here finally getting to show you my new pet rooms. I am going to have another video coming out that talks more about my situation and my life and just what has been going on the past few years. So if you are someone who cares about that, just keep an eye out for that video. But if you don't care about that stuff, then great news for you because we're just gonna ignore it for this video. I am currently standing in one of my two pet rooms. So we're actually going to head over to the other room first and start in that one because that's the bigger one and then we'll come back here to end the video. Now before I get started with the tour I do just have one quick thing to say I promise just this one thing you might notice that there are some animals that I guess you could consider to be missing from this video that I've had in past videos. There have been a couple animals over the past few years that I have found new homes for and unfortunately there have been a couple that have sadly passed away as well so if there is an animal that you are curious about and you want to know what happened to them or where they went, please just leave a comment down below asking about that animal and I promise you I will answer it and I will let you know what happened to that animal. With that said though, most of the animals are still all here with me so I'm sure you will see a lot of familiar faces. And in my video that I post later this week, I will also talk about the whole situation as far as rehoming some animals goes and uh, whatnot. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and check out my new pet rooms. I'm really excited for you guys to see them. So when you first step into the reptile room here, this is what you see. The first terrarium that you kind of notice when you come in the room is my emerald tree skinks. So this is a uh, thing one and thing two. We have one of them right here and one of them right down here. They always get so excited when I open up the terrarium because they think food is coming. But I'm sorry guys, I don't have food for you right now. I'm just here with the camera. I am absolutely obsessed with my emerald tree skinks though. They are so much fun. They are genuinely like one of the coolest lizards I've ever owned. And they're so curious and so inquisitive, so intelligent. I knew I was gonna love them before I got them, but I love them so much more than I expected to. Like just look at this little head tilt going on there. Oh my goodness, you guys are just so cute. And not only are they just like super cute, they are also just the most beautiful shade of green. Truly, I cannot say enough good things about emerald tree skinks. So across the room from my emerald tree skinks, I have two really big shelving units here. Now on this shelf right here, I do have most of my snakes. Both of the bottoms house ball pythons, then I have another one there. Richard, my Brazilian rainbow boa is here. Rocky, my milk snake is there, and then Willow, my children's python is there and on the very top we have ghost my corn snake now I do want to talk about this area a little bit because if I'm being completely honest I don't love it I mean I love this shelf setup it works great but I don't love these enclosures for my snakes because in my opinion they are just not big enough I got these enclosures for my snakes a long time ago when the care standards were quite a bit different and these were considered to be good sizes for the snakes but a lot has changed since then and my opinions have changed since then and I really do think that they would be much better off in much larger enclosures. So I'm not going to talk about that too much in this video right now but I did just want to point it out and I did want to say that I am also going to put out a video giving my thoughts on this situation in much more detail and also outlining what my future plan is to uh, make this situation a bit better because like I said I don't love it how it is I think that they should be in bigger enclosures but for now this is what we have going on in the room here so moving on from my snakes over to this next side of the shelf I have quite a few uh, tall exoterras so on the very far right we have Derek who is my gargoyle gecko next to Derek we have Alfredo and Linguini who are my white tree frogs and we have Mr. Alfredo right here Stuck right on the glass. Hello, Alfredo. And then Linguini 
is right up here hanging out on this piece of cork. These are some of my favorite animals to own. White tree frogs are just incredible. I love all frogs. I think that they are amazing, but these guys, they're just so much fun. If you're someone who wants pet frogs, highly recommend White's Tree Frogs. They are just the derpiest little characters. They're so much fun, they're so goofy. Next to my White's Tree Frogs, we have this lovely enclosure here. And now I must say, I love this enclosure. I built a really nice water feature in this enclosure and I'm actually really sad right now because just a couple days ago, my power went out and when the power came back on, I don't really know what exactly happened, but ever since the power came back on, my water pump that was running the whole water feature here just doesn't work anymore. So now I need to replace the water pump if I want the water feature going again and I'm really sad about that. Enough about the water feature, we should probably talk about the actual animal in here. And that would be Zuko, who is a mountain horn dragon. So these are like a semi-aquatic lizard. They love the water, which is why I had a water feature in here. And he's probably pretty upset that I don't have the water feature going anymore. These are really, really cool lizards. He's so much fun, so much personality, and also quite unique from a lot of the other species I keep. So I've had a lot of fun caring for him. And then on the very end here, we have this enclosure that belongs to my pair of Shihua geckos. Now I only see one of them at the moment and I basically just see the little face sticking out of the top of this cork round. They really like to hide inside of that cork round so I assume they're both in there but as of right now, I only see one face and I'm pretty sure this is my male. Oh, goodbye. So the pair does live in here together and I've had no issues like that. They get along really well. Uh, they've been breeding for me both last year and this year. We will get to see some babies a little later in the tour. And down on the bottom here in these two enclosures, I have my two crested geckos. So on the left here, I have my crested gecko Dorito. And then on the right, I have my crested gecko Rinley. So now let's go and take a look on the other side of the room here. So surprise, surprise, I do have more enclosures over here. Down on the very bottom, I have two of my leopard gecko enclosures. So right in here, we have Alani, and then I also have Sushi in this one. <laughs> you are really ready. I feel like you're gonna bite my fingers when I open this. And now all of a sudden, everyone knows that I have worms. So now everyone thinks that they deserve some. And I think that they are absolutely right. Don't you worry, Sushi, I uh, did not forget about you because how could I do that? Sushi's like going at them before I'm even like in front of her with them. Oh my goodness. You guys are quite something, aren't you? Are you happy now? We have my two adult female cat geckos over on this side. So this is Sadie and Sage's enclosure. And then over here, I do have Chaos, who is my Lichianus gecko. And we can get a little peek of Chaos hanging out on the glass right here. Hello, Chaos. Chaos does not like me very much. And now for the very top shelf here. Uh, these two enclosures belong to my chameleon geckos. In this enclosure here, we do have my breeding pair, Pluto and Venus. And then over here, I do just have one male and his name is Neptune. Next to my chameleon geckos, we have some more cat gecko enclosures. In each of these enclosures, I do have a male and a female cat gecko. Now these aren't adults yet, they're kind of like sub-adults. So these are ones that I'm raising up and will be breeding in the future. I'm really excited to start breeding them again. It's been a couple years since I've been able to. I think that they are incredible geckos and honestly I think that the reputation that they have as far as being really shy and unhandleable goes is not entirely correct, especially when it comes to the captive bred babies. So the last set of enclosures that we have in this room are these three right here and these do belong to Lex, my bearded dragon, Tim, my Aki monitor, and then Marvin, the boa constrictor. Well, hello there. Hello, sir. <laughs> He's like, you better have food for me. 
Wow. <laughs> he was really excited for that worm. Oops, I dropped it or you dropped it. However you want to look at that, one of us dropped it. I guess you're probably waiting for some worms now too, aren't you? I have a feeling. Like I said, I had a feeling. <laughs> and one thing I do want to point out is that Bella, my blue tongue skink, is not in this set of enclosures anymore. Bella actually now lives at my workplace and she's one of my work's education animals. And I brought her out there a little while ago because by bringing her out to my workplace, she was able to get a really big enclosure upgrade. As sad as I am that she's not in my reptile room anymore, I am very happy that I still get to spend a lot of time with her. And I'm also very happy for her that she was able to get a good enclosure upgrade. And then of course we have Marvin, the beautiful boa constrictor. Now I honestly never wanted a boa constrictor. It was never a snake that was really on my radar. I think they're great, but it was just never one that I would have bought myself. Marvin actually belonged to my ex and he just ended up staying with me. But now that I have Marvin and I've cared for him, I can't imagine not having him. Marvin is like one of my favorite snakes I own. He's so much fun, he's such a gentle boy, he's beautiful, I love everything about him, and I was completely wrong about boas. Uh, they're much better than I thought they were, and I did not give them enough credit, but uh, Marvin definitely changed my mind. So this was the first of my pet rooms, but it is uh, not the last. So now, let's go ahead and go through this door and check out the second of my pet rooms here. And now this one doesn't just have reptiles and amphibians in it, but it is also where my rabbits live, so I guess I'll just go ahead and start here. In here we have Thumper and we have Peanut, my two dwarf rabbits. I've had these guys for a long time now. Um, it's coming up on eight years, I think. So with them being almost eight years old, they're starting to uh, reach their older age, but honestly you would Never really tell just by looking at them or being around them. They honestly still act very similar to how they did when they were much younger and neither of them have ever had any health problems. Now, fingers crossed, I'm not jinxing myself right here. So far, they've been nice and healthy and happy. So this is their pen where they uh, spend most of their time. And now this is just an X pen. And then if I open up the door here, that gives them the choice to come out and roam around some more. Although, if I'm being completely honest, Honest, they don't really come out of their pen very often. I don't really know why. I guess you could just kind of uh, consider them to be homebodies, but rarely do they take the opportunity to come out and explore. They just uh, prefer to be where they're nice and comfortable. So here we have Thumper drinking some water, Peanuts over there uh, eating some hay, and of course not pooping in the litter box. Of course she has her butt out here and is a uh, leaving us a nice mess that I'll have to clean up because what is the litter box for, right? So if we move on over from my two rabbits here, I do have a metal shelving unit with a couple different creatures on it. Now starting on the bottom, in the larger bin here, I have my golden terabilis. And then the smaller bin next to that here is where I keep my froglets from my Dendrobates tinctorius azureus. So those are my blue dart frogs that you guys have seen on my channel quite a few times. And now up on the next shelf, uh, in this larger enclosure here, we actually have a brand new resident. And this new resident here is an animal that came to me unexpectedly and by accident, and it is a Cuban tree frog. This frog here actually was an accident dental hitchhiker on a tropical house plant that ended up in Ikea. So someone found a frog and they didn't know what to do with it so they brought it to my work. I was asked if I could take the frog and take care of it and here's how I ended up with a Cuban tree frog. Next to my Cuban tree frog in this little cube exoterra here, I do have my curly hair tarantula. And if I'm being completely honest, I'm not 
really a big invert person. They just don't really interest me a whole lot with the exception of this girl right here. I don't know what it is that makes her so different from the other ones I've kept before, but I am just absolutely in love with my curly hair tarantula. She is just the best. Moving on up a shelf, we have some more tiny little critters. Up in this bin right here, I do actually have a couple Dunder Babies Tinctorious Oyapok. Next to my dart frogs, I have three little critter keepers set up, and now these are actually all set up for some tiny little geckos. So I know earlier on you guys saw my pair of Chihuahua geckos, and now in these two enclosures right here are two of their babies that actually just hatched a few weeks ago. One of them is actually out right here. It might be hard to see with a glare, but you can see one of the little baby Chihuahua geckos right there. So sweet, so tiny, so adorable. And next to the Chihuahua geckos, I do have one of the chameleon geckos that I bred last year that I decided I was going to hold back. And her name is actually Captain Hook. So this here is Captain Hook, and she got her name because she has a funky little tail here. Captain Hook is named after the little hook that is on the end of her tail. So she was not born with her tail like this, she was born with a completely normal tail, but when she was a baby, she had one shed that got stuck a little bit at the end of her tail, and as a result of that stuck shed there, she ended up losing just the very, very tip of her tail. And chameleon geckos are a type of gecko that will regrow their tail if they lose it. The very tip grew back, and it grew back in this strange shape. I really have no explanation as to why it did that, but that's just what happened. So I decided that uh, Captain Hook was going to be the one chameleon gecko that I kept. It's not like this is anything that would negatively affect her life at all, and it's also not something that like would be passed down if I were to breed her. Really, she's no different than any other chameleon gecko out there, but that's just where her name came from. Thought you guys might enjoy that explanation. So we just met a couple tiny geckos here, but now if I move up, to the very top shelf, we have some extremely tiny geckos. In this little enclosure right here, I have a couple chameleon geckos that were just born within the last month. And I have to say, they are some of the cutest things you will ever see. Take a look at how tiny and sweet and precious they are. Oh my goodness, they are just so adorable. I'm obsessed with them. So one of the babies here that you see at the top of the stick actually did also drop its tail, kind of like Captain Hook, except unlike Captain Hook, this baby dropped its entire tail. It did not just drop the tip of it. And it dropped its tail basically immediately after birth. And now it's working on regenerating a new one. So obviously it's not an ideal thing for your gecko to lose its tail, especially when they're so young, but I have to admit that seeing a teeny, teeny, weeny, tiny frog butt chameleon gecko is like literally one of the cutest things you'll ever see. And now the other two tiny enclosures up here belong to animals that I got in a similar fashion to my Cuban tree frog. So up here we actually have a house gecko and a teeny tiny baby brown anole that also both were accidental hitchhikers that were then brought to my workplace. So let's move on and take a look at this side of the room. So down on the bottom, we have Giannis, who is a European legless lizard. Moving on up from Giannis, this terrarium here now houses my gray banded king snake. I introduced my gray banded king snake to you guys in the reptile room tour I did back in my old house. And at the time, he didn't have a name, and I'm happy to announce to you all that my gray banded king snake has since been deemed grandpa. So this is where grandpa now resides and I am just absolutely in love with grandpa. I think his name is amazing and he's also an amazing snake. Next to grandpa we have this teeny tiny little terrarium here which houses my tailless whip scorpion and on the very top shelf here we have one of my angriest pets of them all which would be Viper my Amazon tree boa and I uh, feel like you can probably tell just by looking at her face that she is in fact 
one of the angriest animals I own. Although honestly, I don't know if she quite compares to my children's python. My children's python is a lot of anger in a teeny tiny body. So right over here, we have my three African fat tail geckos. We have one down here, one right there, and one right up here. Well, look who is just uh, right out front and center. Hello, Daisy. Aren't you just the sweetest little gecko ever? I've said it many times before, but I think African fat tail geckos are just the best. They are so sweet, so adorable. The most wholesome gecko ever. And look at who else we have here. We have Fern. Fern came out to say hello as well. Fern is just also so sweet. I mean, I, I really can't say enough good things about African fat tail geckos. Now, Fern does have some neurologic problems, which is uh, why you see her moving a little bit funny. Just look at their faces. And the other two enclosures on the bottom shelf belong to my leopard gecko, Pepper. And we have Pudge, who is my Colorado River Toad. This here is Pudge. Pudge likes to sit in the dirt and wait for food to come by. And that's pretty much how Pudge spends his whole life. He just waits for food in the dirt. Does not do much, does not have too many thoughts. Just dirt and food and Pudge. And Pepper here is uh, pretty great too. She's uh, a wonderful leopard gecko. I've had her for quite a long time now. She was one of my earliest reptiles that I've gotten out of my current bunch. She's actually like 13 years old. Oh wait, no, she'd be way older than that now. Actually, she's probably closer to 15. So Pepper's setup is quite a bit different from my other two leopard geckos. Uh, Pepper here does also have some neurologic problems. After lots of experimenting around, this is ultimately what I found works best for her. Look at that sploot. That is such a good sploot. So in between Daisy and Fern, we have my beautiful dart frog tank that I set up like two years ago now. It's actually been quite a while. And this is home to my pair of Dendrobates tinctorius azureus. Now it's kind of hard to see through the glass. It probably would have been a good idea for me to clean it first, but here is a look inside of the tank. It's honestly due for maintenance pretty soon. The plants are kind of growing in not the way I'd like them to, but I mean, it still suits the frogs just fine. The frogs are more than happy with it, but I would definitely like it to look a bit different than this. Now, I don't even know where my frogs are at the moment. They're completely hiding. It is getting fairly late. The lights are gonna shut off pretty soon, so they might just be getting ready for bed, but this is where Bob and Linda live. I'm sure you go, oh, there we got a quick little hop from one of them. You can see a teeny, teeny, tiny blue face in the back even though the lighting is making it pretty hard to see. One of them did come to make an appearance. Hello, frog. This, this one's Linda. Linda came to say hi. Right up in these two enclosures here, we actually have two more Chihuahua geckos that I bred. And now, unlike the babies we saw over here, these are Chihuahua geckos that hatched last year. So they're now about a year old. And now I did decide that I'm going to keep one of them. I'm going to keep this one over here. And this one over here is going to be looking for a new home. So if you are interested in a Chihuahua gecko and you are in Canada, feel free to message me on Instagram. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at the little sploot. Just sticking his head out of his coconut hut. Hello, little gecko doing a nice little sploot for us. Next to my Chihuahua geckos, we have this terrarium right here, which is actually empty at the moment. There's not anything living in it. And then next to empty terrarium, we have the iconic Sandwich. I'm sure you guys all know and love Sandwich, who's uh, hanging out right here. Hello, Sandwich. And I'm happy to report that Sandwich is doing great. For those of you who uh, don't know, Sandwich is my chubby frog that I got about four years ago, and Sandwich holds holds a very special place in my heart. I mean, all of my animals do, but there's just something so incredibly special about Sandwich, and I will just cherish Sandwich for my entire life. Sandwich is just truly an icon. There's nothing more I could say. Everything I do is for Sandwich. 
I love sandwich so much. And on the very top of the shelf here, I don't have anything too exciting. It's mostly just some storage. And I do also have a nice storage closet in this room. So this is where I keep some of my animal supplies, uh, mostly their food related supplies and then just some other stuff. But it's always lovely to have a storage closet in your animal room. And one of the last things I should talk about, because I kind of skipped over this earlier, is this terrarium right here. Sadly, I must report that this terrarium is empty. It did used to be home to Bert, who was my Vietnamese mossy frog, but unfortunately, I found Bert passed away about two months ago, and I've just not taken this enclosure down or done anything with it yet. So I was very sad to say goodbye to Bert. Uh, truthfully, I don't really know what happened. If I had to guess, it was just his time because Bert was a happy, healthy frog. I'd hear him calling every single night, but Bert also uh, was an unknown age and he was originally wild caught. I did get him on Kijiji a couple years ago from someone rehoming them, so I wasn't his original owner. He's been around for a long time and I don't know his age, so I have a feeling it might've just been his time. And ever since his passing, I've just been letting this enclosure do its own thing and grow some plants, so that's what's going going on with it right now. Oh, and I guess this is technically not part of the reptile room, but I should probably mention that Felix and Fiona, my Parsons chameleons, are currently living outdoors on my little patio area. So there you go. There are my new pet rooms. What do you guys think of them? What do you guys think of the setup here? What do you guys think of uh, this whole new situation? Please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Over my few years that I've been on YouTube, I've had quite a lot of different setups. When I very first started my channel, I was still living at home. All of my animals were just in my one bedroom. Then I moved and I had a whole like basement apartment to myself and my animals were all in the basement with me. Then I moved again and I had an entire basement to dedicate to just my animals. Once again, I moved, then I had multiple animal rooms and then guess what? I moved again and now I have these two animal rooms. So this is the current setup. With the amount of moving I seem to do for some reason, who knows how long this will be my current setup. Honestly, I don't know why I continue to just torture myself by moving so frequently with so many animals. I promise you, it is not fun. It is not easy. But as much as it sucks to move with all these animals, I'm really happy that I was able to move into this new place. I think it worked out really well for me. I think it worked out really well for the animals. And I'm really excited to just keep working with this space and keep working with my animals. I'm always wanting to improve stuff. I have a bunch of projects I want to work on, so I'm sure that things will be changing, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate all of you who have continued to support my channel for so many years now. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up and make sure you leave a comment down below. It really helps me out. Also make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you aren't already and feel free to check out all of my other social medias. They will all be down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.